Hi guys, welcome to Hearts Triple Play on Facebook. The quiz is going to be starting very, very soon. So quickly get all your friends onto the Facebook app to play. Hurry up! Just 10 multiple choice questions stand between you and a share of today's cash prize. We're turning up the feel good on Hearts. Welcome to Hearts Triple Play on Facebook. The quiz is going to be starting in three minutes. So get all your friends on the Facebook app to play. Just 10 multiple choice questions stand between you and a share of today's cash prize. We're turning up the feel good on Hearts. Sam, you just won. £30,000! Across the UK, turn up the feel good. This is Heart. Welcome to Hearts Triple Play on Facebook. The quiz will be starting in 60 seconds. Get all your friends onto the Facebook app to play. Just 10 multiple choice questions stand between you and a share of today's cash prize. of February and it's Feel Good Friday. Welcome back to Hearts Triple Play live on Facebook. Now, if you didn't win today with Hearts 30K Triple Play on the radio, don't worry, this is the game that's going to give you another chance to get your hands on some cash. Just 10 multiple choice questions stand between you and a share of today's cash prize pot 
which is a whopping £1,000. <laughs> Very exciting. Now, if you get a question wrong, you can't win today's cash, but you won't be locked out of the game. And you can still play along, help your mates out, because they can see your answers. So keep on playing and try and steer your mates to victory, because you never know, could be a cheeky Friday drink in it for you if they win big later. So today, your triple play questions are on Who Said That? Children Books and Royals. So if there's a member of the royal family working in your office, they could be. Just go over, curtsy by them, offer them a scone and a cuppa, always works a treat. Or just make sure you're Facebook friends and then you can see their answers. Now for the best playing experience, you know what to do. Plug yourself in, get yourself on the Wi-Fi and have the latest Facebook app installed. If you want to read them, all the T's and C's for the quiz can be found on the Heart website. Now remember, as soon as you see that question pop up on your screen, you'll only have 10 seconds to click on the answer and there'll be triple options to pick from. 10 questions. 10 seconds, triple options. Right, is everybody here? Everybody excited? Are you going to make it all the way to the end? Are you going to be bunking off work for the next half an hour? Yes, come on, let's do it. It is now time for Hearts Triple Play. Hearts Triple Play. OK, we're going to kick things off in a flash with a famous line from a famous film. For question one, I'd like to know. In the 1980 fantasy film Flash Gordon, which actor famously yells the words, Gordon's alive? Brian Harvey, Brian Balo, Brian Blessed. Ah, oh, absolute cult film this, with the greatest soundtrack by the rock gods Queen. Do you remember the actor that was in it though? Uh, I'll give you a clue, he has the deepest voice I think I've ever heard, and the most glorious beard in all the land. Uh, he's also been in loads of other things, Blackadder, Star Wars, and who could forget his starring role in the groundbreaking Peppa Pig. You've got it, right? The answer was Brian Blessed. Oh, and there he is, his gorgeous little beard there. And actually, he's holding a sat-nav. Did you know this? You can get a Brian Blessed voice on your sat-nav, which I just think would make any journey just so much more pleasurable. Uh, so, yes, actor, Everest explorer. There is no end to Brian's talents. Uh, actually, he's met quite a few historical figures in this time. And, right, this is brilliant, OK? At one point, he went to meet the Queen. She was more excited to see him. And she actually, when she met him, like, within the first few seconds, she she said, can you say your catchphrase, Gordon's alive? Just for her, incredible. The Queen's rendition, Gordon's alive. <laughs> okay, we're gonna crack on to question two. Now all good uh, game shows need a memorable catchphrase. Here we go. It's good, but it's not right. There's the catchphrase of which TV host? Roy Walker, Roy Hodgson, Roy of the Rovers. Ah, oh, I do love a good catchphrase. In fact, I think I should come up with my own. Um, milk, no sugar? Nah, I think not. No, not quite right, is it? How about uh, four bake or tart stat? Hold the custard. Nah, no, not really getting the whole hang of this, am I? Uh, we'll leave it to the experts, but have a think. Who said that catchphrase? The answer was, of course, the legendary Roy Walker. Yep, and the best thing about this catchphrase? It was the catchphrase for the game show catchphrase. Are you catchphrasing my drift? Yeah, so Roy Walker, he was the original host of the TV show in the 80s and the 90s, and he charmed the nation with his gentle tones. Unlike that pesky Mr. Chips and his dodgy charades, yeah. Mm. OK, shall we see who we've got playing today? Sarah, Helen, Amy, Caroline, Carl and Connor. I can see you playing, skiving at work. Come on, we're going to get you through today. We're going to move on now from 80s game shows to 80s music. And this next one's easy if you're watching TV over Christmas. What else is there to do, eh? So, everybody who saw it has actually been quoting it ever since. Hopefully you were paying attention. Question three. In the 2018 Broths documentary, who said, once bitten, twice shy? 20 times bitten, a little shy. Matt Goss, Luke Goss, David Brent. Later this year, Broths are going to be performing live again in London, so who knows? Maybe we'll get some more fantastic words of wisdom from them. But who said that line in the documentary? And what exactly did bite him 20 times? So many questions, so little time. But back to the answer. And the answer is... Which brother did he go for? It was Luke Goss. Yeah, there's the lads there. Oh, living the dream back then. Yeah, that documentary, it was just... So brilliant, wasn't it? If you haven't seen it, you need to watch it. It was full of amazing quotes by the twin superstars, Mac and Luke Goss, who are pretty much like a thinking man's Jedward. That's how I like to imagine them. Uh, my favourite quotes, I think, have to be the letters H-O-M-E are so important because they personify the word home. And Rome wasn't built in a day, but we don't have the time Rome had. 
I'm going to use that one myself, I think. Uh, yeah, so there we go. Well done if you got it right. Melissa, Isaac, Sheridan, Louise, you are still in the game. We're going to crack on now. Well done. Seven questions to get through and to get your hands on a share of that glorious £1,000 prize. So, for the next question, pay attention to the answers of any of your mates that like reading or have kids or have kids that like reading. Whatever. Have a little look. For question four, I'd like to know. Charlie, George and James are names that appear in the titles of books by which author? C.S. Lewis, Enid Blyton, Roald Dahl. Yeah, they're all famous authors of well-known children's books. Any of their titles, though, ring a bell. We used to read a whole range of authors growing up in the old Welby household. Emily Bronte, J.R.R. Tolkien, Shakespeare, Katie Price being Jordan. All the classics. Uh, but back to the author today, and the answer is... The legend, Roald Dahl. Oh, I love Roald Dahl. I used to love his books. Of course, it was Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, George's Marvelous Medicine, and James and the Giant Peach. And who can forget Johnny Depp and the Tim Burton collab of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, eh? Johnny was just so good at playing that guy in the house with the scissors for hands. Sorry, what? Oh, different film. Sorry, Johnny was so great at playing that hairdresser who made pies out of his clientele. Still the wrong film. OK, we'll just move swiftly on. Well done if you got that one right. Laura, Anita, Elaine and Rachel, you're still in the game. We are four down. Only six to go. You're almost halfway to your share of that big cash prize. For question five, come on, I'd like to know. In the Harry Potter books, Fluffy, the three-headed dog, was inspired by which mythical creature? Hydra, Cerberus, Chimera. Yeah, there are all sorts of fantastic beasts in the Harry Potter world, often based on ancient mythology. But which of these mythical beasts do you remember being in the film and being called Fluffy? Quite a key role in the film. God in the uh, Philosopher's Stone was our Fluffy. And before you ask, no, it wasn't Robbie Coltrane, although that was one hell of a beard. So, the answer was Cerberus. Oh, yeah, some Harry Potter fans clearly in the house today. Fluffy is inspired by Cerberus, which is a three-headed dog beast in Greek mythology. I do actually love it when a scary-looking animal is given a sweet name. For example, like, would an eight-foot tarantula scare you if it was called Trudy? Or how about Arabella, the anaconda? Not as scary, is it? Yeah, J.K. Rowling uh, confirmed Fluffy's fate back in 2015 on Twitter by saying that he'd been safely returned to his home country of Greece. Save us some satsiki, Fluffy, mate. Doubt he will, though, with the whole having three heads thing. So, very good. Gail, Reese, Leanne and Michael, doing very well. We're going to move on. The next author's work has inspired a whole host of massive Disney movies. For question six, can you tell me? After outstaying his welcome as a house guest, Hans Christian Andersen fell out with which author? Thomas Hardy, Lewis Carroll, Charles Dickens. Oh, Hans Christian Andersen wrote very famous stories, The Emperor's New Clothes, The Little Mermaid, The Ugly Duckling. But poor Hans, he ended up becoming the ugly house guest after his short stay at one of these authors' houses became a very long one. And he horribly outstayed his welcome. Don't you hate it when people do that? So awkward. Uh, but which of these English authors' homes did he stay at and then fall out with? Get those answers in. In fact, if you've answered already, just send us some mermaid and duckling emojis while we're waiting in honour of hands. OK, the time is up and the answer is... Charles Dickens! Yeah, Great Expectations author Charles Dickens and his family described him as a bony boar who stayed on and on and on. He's still loved, though, back in his native land. And if you go to Copenhagen, there is a very famous statue of the Little Mermaid in, his, uh, in the harbour. I actually love the Disney version of that story. And word on the grapevine is there's going to be a live action of the Little Mermaid made very soon. Who's going to play Ariel, though? It's got to be someone with red hair, hasn't it? Ed Sheeran, Mick Hucknell. Hmm... Yeah, they're going to struggle, aren't they? And talking of struggle, it was a heartbreaker! Oh, no! Yeah, we lost over 500, I'd be on that one. But if you can still stay in the game, you can help everyone else out. So let's do it for the team. It's Feel Good Friday. We're all working together. So well done if you're still in. OK. Now, just four more questions. Stand between you and the glorious prize. So we're going to change the subject a little bit now. We're going to move from children's books to the royal family. Coming up for question seven. Former royal butler Paul Burrell was a judge on which of these reality shows? Irish princess, Australian princess, English princess. Yeah, you might remember him appearing on I'm a Celebrity a few years ago. You know, the guy put his hand in the wall and cried like a small child. I'll do an impression if you like. Oh, 
Oh, it's, it's rats. It's rats. It's rats. Why? Why? Yeah, remember him? I hope that helped jog the old memory. The answer in a totally different program. Uh, the Australian princess was the answer. Yeah, Paul Burrell, bless him. Butler to the legendary Lady Di. And her children are obviously Prince William and Prince Harry, who I like to think could be playing the quiz right now. I have seen a few Harrys and Wills pop up. You never know. A very good afternoon, Wills and Hazza, in case you are playing. Yeah, so this reality show, an uh, Australian princess, um, it was about 12 ill-mannered Australian women who were taken to London to master the finer arts of British society and to be crowned Australian princess. Only the best got through, and I think the worst ended up as my old flatmate. Can't be confirmed. So, for question eight, I would like to know which of these kings was Queen Elizabeth II's great grandfather, Edward the Seventh, Edward the Eighth, George the Fifth. Now remember, you can see other people's answers, so one of your Facebook friends who's playing is quite good with her royal history and all that, keeps all those uh, glossy royal family mags in the newspapers, just have a little peek at what they're writing. It's not cheating, it's third party research. So, the answer to question eight is Edward the Seventh. Well done if you got it right. Yet yeah, George VI was our Queen's dad and George V was his father, making him the Queen's grandfather. Then his father was Edward VII, who was the Queen's great-grandfather and the Queen, by the way, uh, is Elizabeth II. Everyone keeping up? Why do the royals keep recycling the names? Come on, guys, mix it up a bit. It's getting confusing. Suzanne, Toria, Melissa and Sally, you are still in the game. Now, as we move on, the Queen, she's got four children, all of whom have been very busy having kids of their own. So for question nine, as we get very close to this prize now, which is the second oldest of the Queen's grandchildren? The second oldest, Zara Tyndall, Prince William, Peter Phillips. Yep, Queen Elizabeth, she's got eight grandkids, but also seven great grandkids. So buying Christmas presents, it must be an absolute nice nightmare, mustn't it? I reckon she just should do like a secret Santa with a five quid budget or get a loyalty card at Poundland. That'll save the pennies, genius idea that. Um, but we do need to find out who is the second oldest out of the Queen's many, 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 many grandkids. I hope you got it right. The answer is Zara Tyndall. And there she is, living the best life ever on that horse there. Hi, Zara. Yeah, so Zara. Second eldest uh, grandchild of the Queen. She's younger sister to Peter, who is the oldest grandchild, and they're both the children of Princess Anne. Zara is 17th in line to the throne. Peter's 14th in line. Prince George, who is Prince William's oldest son, is third in line to the throne, making him the highest achieving five year old in the world. And who can forget our old mate Danny Dyer, who is 110,000th in line to the throne? Could happen. Okay, well, if you're still in, congratulations. It's actually quite tight. There's only 16 of you in the running now, and you're just one correct answer away from being top dog and having a share of that glorious £1,000 prize pot. Have a think what you do with that money, because it's time for a final question. Final question. Okay. Here we go. Now, as we all know, the Queen appears on the back of all of our coins. On this day in 1971, the UK changed its old currency of farthings, pennies and shillings to our current decimal system of 100 pennies to the pound. Now, because we're hot's triple play, I want to know, for question 10, how many shillings were there in three pounds? 36, 60, 72. Oh, it all gets so confusing with old money. It starts to sound like the scene from Oliver Twist, doesn't it? Now, you might not remember shillings yourself. Hopefully you've got parent or grandparent or mate old enough to remember. Just quickly see if they're free to give you a helping hand. Just tell them just for a split second, stop making that cup of tea. I need your help for the last question of the week. <sighs> OK, I'm getting overexcited now. Here we go. For your share of £1,000, I'm wishing you all the luck in the world. The answer was 60. So there were 20 shillings per pound, so 60 in three. The shilling was divided into 12 pennies. The penny was further split into two half pennies or four farthings. It's very confusing. So good we've moved on to decimals now. It's going to be a lot easier sharing that prize money today, isn't it? OK, so this is the exciting part now. The good news is there's going to be more than just a few pennies coming your way if you got that question right. Did you make it? Did you win? Come on, let's find out. Play. Amazing!
guys, and 12 of you made it to the end. Oh, brilliant. Kieran, Daniela, Joshua, Zoe, and James, Remy, Jamie, Najim, Gerard, and Suzanne. Absolutely bossed it on a Friday afternoon. Drinks on you tonight. 83 quid in your back pocket. Hey, that's not bad, is it? Thank you so much for playing. I've seen a few names popping up all week. It's been so much fun. I'm afraid, though, that is as done for the day. But remember, if you'd like the chance to win a life-changing sum of money, £30,000, you've got to make sure you're listening to us on Heart on the radio every weekday between 10 in the morning and 4 in the afternoon to play our brilliant Hearts 30k triple play. Now, don't worry, I'm going to be back here on Facebook at 4.30 on Monday for another Hearts triple play. I hope to see you there. It's been so much fun. Have a great weekend. Hearts triple play.